Jodarha is an extremely agile character that is able to non-stop attack the enemies, all the while being invincible and provide an incredible buff to the entire party. He is the god of speed in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink and a character that I believe is very slept on by the community. Maybe it has something to do with his height. But in today's video I will be showcasing what I believe to be an extremely fun, versatile and powerful character as I'll be showcasing my endgame build for Yodarha by going through all the skills, sigils, weapons and overall optimizations so that you can get the most out of him and his build. With that being said, Hello everyone, my name is Dark Hero and welcome back to another Grand Blue Fantasy Relink video. If you are enjoying these guide showcases, let me know which character I should cover next. And with that being said, let's get started. So as I said before, Yodara is a very fast and agile character that is able to dish out a ton of hits. And so if we take a look at its basic attack combo, it's a very simple combo string where he goes up into the air and slams down into the ground. And then if you do the combo finisher at the end, you become invincible during its period while you are doing these multiple slashes that deal plenty of damage. As you saw, we also got this mark right here, which is a unique mechanic to Yodarha, which I'll talk about in a moment. Now, a very cool thing about Yodarha is that if you perform four different combo finishers in succession, that's two, and that's three, and that's the fourth one, you will now be able to perform a full combo with just a single press of a button like so, and so you can keep on spamming these combo finishers, which will grant you invincibility a lot more often, and while these combos are a lot shorter, they still end up doing more damage, so not only are you able to be invincible for a much longer period of time, you're also able to dish out more damage this way. So Yodara's playstyle is going to try to maximize the combo finishers and never stop attacking to try to maintain that combo for as long as possible. Now whenever you perform a combo finisher with your Darha, you're going to be receiving a stamp at the very end, like so, and the stamps will actually disappear from your HUD after a while, but if you just press the R1 button to highlight your skills, you'll be able to see the stamp on screen. This stamp is going to affect the way that your skills work, so we will be going over how the stamp affects each of the different skills when we get to the skills. However, keep in mind that Yodare can have up to three different stamps, with this being what the final stamp looks like. And of course when you perform a link attack with Yodarha, you can follow it up with a combo finisher to receive even more stamps. But the cool thing here is that if you perform a link attack you get another stamp and if you then follow the link attack with a combo finisher you get a second stamp. So that is a very quick and easy way for you to max out Yodarha's stamps. That being said, Yodarha's heavy button is this lunge where he is able to dash at an enemy from a pretty long distance, so it can be functionally used as a gap closer of sorts that can then be followed into a normal combo. However, you can actually hold this button and you will be blocking like this. The cool thing about this heavy attack is that it can be used as a counter, like so. Now this counter functions very differently compared to most counters in the game. If you are simply holding the button you're not doing anything really, you're still going to get hit. What you need to do is release the button at the time that an attack is about to connect with you, which is indicated by that white flash, this white circle that you see, that is the timing that you want to watch out for so you can succeed with your parry. And as you can see whenever you successfully perform a parry you are rewarded with receiving supplementary damage. Which means that whenever you hit an enemy you will proc additional instances of damage that will deal 25% of the original hit's damage. That being said the supplementary damage bonus that you get from this lasts for a very short amount of time. I believe it lasts for only 10 seconds. So recognizing when to go for one of these parries so that you can maintain optimal uptime on the supplementary damage is one of the things that is going to make the better Yodarha players stand out from the rest. And in case you didn't know, supplementary damage is by far one of the best ways for you to increase your damage output in this game, as you are not essentially just raising your attack, you are adding multiple instances of damage on top, which means that they will not hit the damage cap. So now that we have gone over Yodarha's basic kit, let's take a look at all of his skills. The first skill we're going to take a look at is going to be Awakening, which is quite simply a gap closer than Yodara then follows with a couple of attacks and of course you can follow it up with a combo finisher. 
The damage of Awakening is going to change depending on how many stamps you have currently available. So without any marks or stamps, Awakening is going to deal around 350k damage. Whereas if you have all three of your stamps or marks, it's going to deal around 700,000 damage. I like Awakening a lot because not only is it a gap closer, it's also a very fast attack that you can follow up with a combo finisher right after. It doesn't have a lot of delay and so you can keep on comboing it right after. And the cool thing about your Darha is that if you do a skill and then follow it up with a combo finisher and go into regular combo, all of this is going to continue the count towards making your combo be this infinite loop where you're able to stack the combo finishers more often. And so having a skill that lets you get into the combo finisher very quickly while also being a gap closer that deals a lot of damage is something that I enjoy a lot. The next skill is going to be Empty Mist, where you can keep on holding down the button and Yodara will keep doing multiple slashes and then of course you can follow it up with a combo finisher. And the cool thing about Empty Mist is that the more stamps you have available, the longer you'll be able to keep on pressing down the button to deal as much damage as possible. Right there I was able to do 3.28 million damage and that was in an instant by simply holding down this button, so this skill is very very powerful. And Empty Mist is going to be even better against large bosses since you'll be able to hit multiple parts at the same time. This is by far one of the best tools that Yodara has available at his disposal, so do not sleep on it. The next skill on the list is going to be Flashing Void. Now if you simply press this skill, Yodara is going to teleport to an enemy and only do that gap closer. But you probably spotted that glowing white circle. You have to press the attack button within that timing to extend the combo up to 12 times. Like so. And the timing for these button presses is going to become shorter each time you do it up to 12 times. Like so. And whenever you do the final one, you can follow it up with a combo finisher to deal even more damage. As you saw, I was able to deal over 5 million damage with that single skill alone. It is a very powerful skill, and because the skill also has a very long animation, it's not the highest DPS, but it is still very powerful, and it becomes stronger the more marks you have available. So let's see how much damage we deal at the end of this combo. just under 6 million damage. And the very cool thing about Flashing Void is that you're actually able to move around while you're doing it, like so, by simply holding down the joystick in the direction that you want to go in, so that you actually avoid incoming damage while you are doing it. So that way you aren't as vulnerable whenever you're doing this, you can avoid attacks and still keep on hitting the enemy for a lot of damage, like so. Keep in mind again that you only become invincible when you perform the combo finisher at the end, so you still need to be careful to avoid damage while performing this attack. Now the next skill is going to be Sky Shatter, where Yodarha lunges into the air and plunges his sword down, firing this beam that travels along the ground, dealing a lot of damage. And of course you can follow this up with a combo finisher as always, so that is very nice. And the more marks you have available, the more damage you're going to be doing with Sky Shatter like so. It's a very simple skill that you're able to use in an instant, and so if you see that a big attack is coming, you're able to use this to quickly get into your invulnerability period with the combo finisher to avoid that incoming attack while still dealing heavy damage. That being said, I don't like this skill a whole lot, but it is quite a powerful tool, so it should not be underestimated. Now the next skill is called Tit for Tat, which is quite simply a parry where if you press the button, Yodara pulls out his sword and you're able to parry an incoming attack and you can of course follow it up with a combo finisher. And Tit for Tat will also deal more damage based on how many marks you have available. That being said, Yodara does have three different buffs, so let's go over all of them. With the first one being called Trice Blade, where Yodara is able to buff his attack, increasing it from 25 to 100% based on how many marks he has available. So with no marks it would be 25%, with one mark 50%, two marks 75 and with all three marks it would be a 100% attack increase. However, you do lose the effect whenever you take damage, and as we have discussed so many times before on this channel, being able to raise your attack becomes pretty useless towards the end game, as you will be able to fully max out and hit the damage cap with just a couple of offensive sigils, and so buffs like these that would actually 
actually be very cool in the game if the damage cap weren't so low, end up just becoming a waste of a slot and so I really don't recommend that you guys go with this skill. Although if you are yet to reach the end game, it can still be a nice buff. Now the next buff on the list is the Heimd of the Hundreds, where quite simply Yodarha is able to grant himself mirror image, which lets him take three different hits without taking any damage. The visual indication for the game actually hitting you whenever you're using mirror image really isn't there, so it's a little bit hard to tell whenever your mirror image has been activated once or twice, but whenever you do get hit three times you'll lose all of this blurry effect on your character, you will lose the indication of your buff below your HP, and now if you come over here we're going to get hit. Now another very cool thing about Yodarha is that if your marks are fully maxed out, if you have three different stamps and you perform the Heimd of the Hundreds, you're going to grant mirror image for your entire party. So this way you're able to provide some party wide utility and being able to make your enemies not take damage from a big AoE that was about to hit them, it's just a very nice and reliable way to add survivability to your team and that makes adding Yodarha to a party a lot more valuable. As for Yodarha's final skill, this is what truly makes him such a powerful character. Perpetual Rotation is a skill that, if you simply press it, it's going to grant Yodarha all three of his marks. That is already quite good given that not only does having the three stamps boost all of Yodarha's skills, as you'll see later on in the video, he also has a sigil that is going to make it so that whenever you use a skill there is a 75% chance of not consuming those marks. So with perpetual rotation you would be able to have a very good uptime on all three of your marks without having to go into the basic attack combo just to get those marks back. That being said, if you use perpetual rotation with all three of your marks, as you'll see you will receive all of your cooldowns back. So that means that if for example you break a big boss and he goes down and you have a big window to dish out damage, if you have all three of your marks you can go ahead and use empty mist to deal a ton of damage, follow that up with the flashing void to deal even more damage, even go ahead and use your mirror image and if you still have all three of your marks you can use perpetual rotation to get those cooldowns back and use yet another empty mist to deal even more damage, follow it up with a combo finisher going to a flashing void and the damage output of this will be absolutely nuts. And of course during lane time this is going to be even more powerful as you'll be able to go into empty mist, follow it up with an awakening, use sky shatter as well and then use perpetual rotation to get all of those cooldowns back again. And if you're maxing out your link time with other party members which are also filling it up, you will have time to unleash three different empty mists without any issues. So again, your damage output will go through the roof, all thanks to perpetual rotation. Now let's take a look at my recommended build for Yodarha. Starting off with the weapons, the Stinger one with the critical hit rate is going to be my first recommendation, as you'll be attacking a lot with Yodarha, so more crits and the crits dealing more damage is just going to benefit you a lot. If you don't want to grind for Terminus weapons, go with the Ascension weapon, but of course the Terminus weapon is going to be the best option, thanks to Sigil booster and damage cap, as well as Catastrophe greatly boosting your damage output, and then Regen is a nice bonus. As you can see I went with Aegis and low profile as well as critical hit rate 10 for my right stone, just be careful that by adding Aegis, you may have to run Tyranny to be below 45,000 HP to still be in range to take advantage of Catastrophe. As for the overmasteries, my recommendation is always going to be to get as much skill damage cap up and normal attack damage cap up as possible and then go from there. Unfortunately I didn't get very lucky, I got normal attack damage cap up 16 and I also have damage cap up on the skybound art which is a little bit nice but these are not very good rolls, ideally I would be able to get something better. Now as for these sigils, Yodarha's first unique sigil is called Swordmaster's Prowess. It will boost Yodarha's attack power whenever he lands a combo finisher, raising the attack by 30% and the effect will reset whenever the combo chain ends. Personally I'm not a huge fan of this sigil, because again raising your attack isn't that big of a deal in the endgame and the fact that the effect will end whenever the combo chain ends means that you won't be able to have a 100% uptime on the sigil and so I really don't think that it is all that good. 
That being said, Swordmaster's Art, the second signature sigil I do believe is a lot better, as it provides you with a 75% chance to not consume your shroud marks whenever you use a skill that would consume them, which makes the whole strategy of resetting the skill cooldowns a lot more viable. I like this sigil a lot, and so as you can see with my build, I ended up going solely with Swordmaster's Art and not the other unique sigil. Now if you were lucky you would be able to roll this one with damage cap up, which would mean you would be able to remove one of these 4 damage cap sigils. Sadly I wasn't as lucky and so I ended up going for a quick cooldown, which as you'll see I am able to max out which is going to grant me a 20% skill cooldown reduction, so I will be able to have a higher uptime on my mirror image for example, or be able to reset my cooldowns more often. The damage cap sigils are very much self-explanatory, it's the most important sigil in the entire game. This one comes with improved dodge, which will allow me to dodge 7 times instead of 3, and I have more iframes on the dodge. A very nice quality of life sigil. These two come with quick cooldown and this one comes with potion hoarder. A sigil that I end up liking more and more, as it's going to increase the number of your potions, which means that you're able to maintain stamina active a lot more consistently, while at the same time not running out of potions in case of an emergency. I like this sigil a lot, and so that is going to stay on pretty much every single one of my builds. I also have a critical hit rate 5 sigil that comes with stamina, so with this I end up with 80% critical hit rate, which isn't the best but it is still very reliable, and I get a decent bonus to my attack thanks to stamina, raising my attack by up to 51% whenever I am at full health. I also have this fantastic tyranny sigil that comes with ages as well, so the idea here is that I lower my max HP to be able to get this extra attack from tyranny, at level 16 it gives me 36% and I still get ages which is still going to further boost my HP, so I am able to remain below 45,000, so the catastrophe from the terminus weapon is going to remain active and at the same time I have a pretty decent amount of HP. As you can see I also have 3 different supplementary damage sigils, I know that they are very rare, but they are very important in increasing your damage output as they essentially just add another instance of damage whenever you attack, which is going to deal 25% of the original's damage, and so it is by far one of the best ways for you to raise your damage output without hitting the damage cap. Again I understand that these are very rare, in case you don't have them I would advise you to go with some more quality of life sigils, like for example adding drain, guts, auto revive, those would all be nice quality of life skills to add to your build. As you can see I also have glass cannon on here, a somewhat controversial sigil that is going to raise your attack by 30% and your damage cap as well by 30%, with the downside of inflicting you with dizzy whenever you do get hit. That being said, Yodarha is one of those characters that not only does he have a parry built into his kit, he also has access to mirror image and another skill that is also a parry, not to mention that his combo finisher makes him invincible, so you have plenty of ways to avoid incoming damage, which is why I do believe that Glass Cannon is a very good sigil especially on him. Berserker could also be a nice option, but personally I do not like to let go of my dodge or my block, even with a character with so many defensive options as Yodarha, and Berserker doesn't even increase your damage cap, it only raises your attack, so I don't like that sigil very much. And finally War Elemental is quite simply make it so that all of your attacks count as being of a superior element, so you'll be dealing 25% more damage and this is on top of the damage cap. So again, a very powerful sigil whose only downside is the fact that it is so rare. So overall Yodarha is a very very powerful character that if played well enough is able to keep on dealing damage to the bosses non-stop and his damage output is really really good, almost on par with some of the strongest characters and again having the ability to provide mirror image to the entire team is an insanely good ability. Especially with the new harder content coming in the next month, I do believe that Yodarha is going to prove to be an even more powerful character. And so this is my endgame build and guide for Yodarha. If you are enjoying these videos, let me know which character I should cover next. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Arkiro and as always, happy hunting.